Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today it's time for another Unified Minds deck. This time it's going to be an updated Ultra Necrozma build. Now Malamar in general is getting a lot of hype. Um, it has been performing pretty well in my testing. Um, there are all sorts of builds flying around and Ultra is one of the ones that's most touted to be the strongest. I think there's a lot of people on the uh, pure spell tag build, but I think Ultra Necrozma has that big stopping power to get through some big threats, and that's a really big selling point. So let's talk about the basic concept. As we know, Malamar is still pretty much able to get its stuff going, thanks to Mysterious Treasure staying around, as well as the new introduction of Pokemon Communication to sort of overtake the Ultra Balls that used to be in there, as well as Net Balls. Obviously not quite as good, but in theory, we can still get a couple of these going uh, relatively smoothly and get into our Giratinas early, as well as Ultra Necrozma being a big one hit KO option. And that's the big reason why we like him. Uh, he can uptrade on tag teams, and that's obviously what we're looking for. We have Malamar to help power him up, and Sneak Peek, we are playing B-Strings as well to try and get a big burst of damage going to get through some of these big walls, which is obviously a great deal for us. And uh, of course, because we have just two copies of Giratinas in the deck, we essentially can Distortion Door infinitely if we want to play a non-GX game plan for as long as we can, and then just have the Ultra Necrozma as like a late game kind of swing card or to try and use him for his GX attack option to close the game. Ultra Necrozma, very versatile. He is both a huge one-hit KO merchant, as well as like a late-game sweep attacker with that GX Sky Scorching Light, so something to bear in mind. Let's jump into the Pokemon. Uh, we are playing three copies of Jirachi. I like Stellar Wish. Uh, it really helps this deck out. We are constantly digging for treasures and constantly digging for comms. Um, it's also pretty nice for helping you on that B-string turn once again. Something to bear in mind that this deck is trying to capitalize on that now so that you can Photon Geyser um, through tag teams. I think it's definitely worthwhile. So having this uh, Jirachi Pivot is obviously a pretty good deal for you. Uh, we're playing a high switch count as well, um, just naturally with our high retreat cost Pokemon, so Jirachi fits in pretty well. Uh, we try and have a pretty high count of it um, so that we can also use communications to get rid of them if need be, as well as having reasonable odds of getting it um, in our opening hands, which is nice. Two copies of Ultra Necrozma. Um, he is, like, in theory, a main attacker, but you'll only really use him, like, a couple times. So you get away with just playing two copies. He's a Dragon-type 190 hit point Ultra Beast um, with that Photon Geyser attack, 20 plus 80 for each basic psychic that you discard from him. Um, and you obviously discard all uh, basic psychics attached to him. So you're really trying to ramp that damage up. Um, two basic psychics is enough for you to get through to Dene's. Um, and then, you know... It's down to using a bunch of psychic recharges and um, Malamars to, as well as, oh, sorry, B strings to get through those tag team threats, which is something to bear in mind. Or just try and uh, hope that your opponent can't find custom catcher combos if you're going to power him up on the bench here and there, which is obviously something you can go for. There are some decks simply not playing customs, and then you really just have free reign of the opponent to max out your Drona Cosma over a couple of turns to take big swings, which is a pretty good deal for you. And then there's that Sky Scorching Light, which is a great finishing move. If any other deck is playing Jirachi, which, to be honest, a bunch of my decks are playing Jirachi because it's so good at uh, accumulating things like Custom Catcher. And Ultra and Cross is one of the best punishers of people playing things like Jirachi, things like Mew, uh, any like low hit point evolving basics, um, or even some stage ones like opposing Malamars that you can Distortion Door into the Sky Scorching Light range is something you're definitely going to be trying to do as well. So something to bear in mind, Sky Scorch still a phenomenal option for you. Uh, and it turns out it can be a great way for you to actually beat uh, Shedinja as well. If you use enough Shadow Impacts of your Giratina to knock out your own Giratina once or twice, um, or maybe even three times sometimes with your own Giratina, that, that has to be the case. Uh, but it just means your opponent takes enough prize cards for your Sky Scorching Light to actually be live um, for you then to like sweep their back line, which is quite a fun thing to do. If you're using Psy Power with Mew and Distortion Door a bunch of times because you're knocking out your own Giratina so much, uh, the Sky Scorching can actually like get around the Shedinja matchup, which is actually quite funny. Um, there's also the 5-4 line of Malamar. The Ditto is literally just a fifth Inke in this deck. Um, because we don't have as good Ball Search as we would like these days, uh, we're trying to make up for that with a physical extra copy uh, with that Ditto. The double Giratina, I've just mentioned how nice Distortion Door is to reload. And of course, like in those opening turns, Shadow Impact is still good for getting through. Again, some basics, some evolving stuff, and all that goodness. Also, it's, you know, more often than not two-shotting tag teams, especially with Distortion Door being an option in there as well. We're playing one copy of the Dene GX. Dene Change gives us some extra discard synergy for Psychic Energies, as well as digging a little bit harder in the deck. 
there are sometimes a handful of uh, turns where you don't have much going for you outside of like one communication and then the, the Dene is something you'll look towards to get yourself a big hand. You do try and be a little bit cautious with it when you can because it does have that drawback of being an easy custom catcher target. But at the end of the day, this is still something that can get us out of bad spots. And we're playing one copy of Mew. Uh, the bench barrier, obviously a huge deal against Picarom. I think we're heavily unfavored without Mew. I think it's just a guaranteed card that you have to play these days. Uh, because Pika Rom is a big threat for Worlds, um, as well as, again, helping you get a little sprinkle of damage here and there to maybe finish things off if they retreat to the bench and you've not been able to one-shot them or get you, once again, in line for a Sky Scorching Light uh, for future turns as well. So this Mew definitely is a really nice include in the deck. Onto the trainers, playing a couple copies of Acrobike. I kind of want more, but uh, you only really have space for two in my eyes. Um, having some minor additional discard synergy is pretty nice in the deck. And um, it also helps you cycle, which is obviously pretty good. Two copies of Beast Ring. I think it's a reasonable count when you have Jirachis that you'll be prob uh, probably going into in between turns with our high count. Um, so we can try and fish these out on the correct turns, which is obviously a pretty big deal for us to get an effectively an extra 160 damage bursted onto the board, which is obviously a pretty big deal. Uh, three switch and two escape board to supplement the Jirachis, as well as to help the two retreat cost of Ultra if he tanks a hit, which is pretty rare in this format, to be honest. But if he is able to tank a hit, you can switch and Malamar back onto him or whatnot. Also, of course, Giratina, if you start him, he has a really chunky retreat cost, so moving those things are really important. Four treasure, four com, and three Viridian round out the list. I think these are all pretty self-explanatory counts at this point, um, so not too much to discuss there. Onto the supporters, um, I'm still playing Judge in my Malabar builds. Uh, I still prefer it to Reset Stamp. Reset Stamp still feels like a throwaway card in this deck so often. Yes, you have Jirachis for Stellar Wishing, and yes, there are those times where you don't find your stamps early, and they are great late game. Uh, but so often, uh, if it's in you know the top 30 cards of your deck, they are really, really terrible. Whereas Judge is a, kind of a halfway house. He's never that amazing, but he's at least providing some disruption whilst also giving you a mild refresh as well. So I'm still preferring the Judge in my own personal Malamars, um, but I can definitely still see the argument for Reset Stamp. I mean, Stamp's a pretty good card. It's just eating into your own draw outs, I guess. Um, Erica's Hospitality helps you dig a little bit deeper into your deck. This is nice. Once again, when you're trying to hold on to pieces, oftentimes in the late game, if you're looking towards a Sky Scorching Light or something like that, you're going to try and look towards you know, getting a Viridian and an Ultra Necrozma or those pieces accumulated whilst you're doing all this other distortion door shenanigans like one or two times before. Uh, so the Erica helps you dig a little bit deeper, which is always nice, rather than just like refresh from Lilies and Cynthia's if you're trying to hold combination cards. Um, and once again, like this is just a really powerful supporter um, to supplement the four Lily and four Cynthia. I do have a pretty high count of supporters. You might want to go further towards the Acrobike route if you wanted to. Um, I wouldn't be against just playing one Erica and trying to fit in like a third Acrobike instead or some other like consistency card. Um, I'm not hugely against that, but I like just having the outs because uh, Lily and Cynthia, they're still pretty good options in this deck. Uh, we have a lot of discarding cards with the Viridians and the Treasures, a lot of interplay stuff. So the Lilies are usually not that terrible in the mid game. Um, and Cynthia is always just a gold standard of supporter really at the moment. Onto the energies, we play 11 total. One is going to be that Beast Energy Prism Star. Uh, it's obviously very good for giving us that Choice Band. Obviously, Choice Band's rotated now, so Beast Energy is the only means that we have of getting that buff, and it does help some certain math uh, with the Ultra Necrozma, making it one energy cheaper in some cases. Uh, three Metal Energies, as well as seven Psychic, should give us plenty to see in those opening turns, especially those Psychic Energies that we want to pitch with Treasures and with Viridians, as well as having... You know, the three physical counts of metal in the deck, as well as, once again, three Viridians, means that we don't really have to worry about missing an Ultra Necrozma um, option when we really need to get it, even if we are stamped in like the mid-game or whatnot. Hopefully, we still have plenty of outs to get that Ultra Necrozma rolling, and um, we still have enough energy to manually attach turn by turn, because um, although your Malamars don't get gusted quite as often as they used to, um, your ball search is so much worse that like you're pretty much over the moon if you get three Malamars out in most situations. Um, so it feels like you really need to have manual attachments every single turn with Mali these days. You can't get away with just recharging, recharging, and being happy with that. You've got to keep getting manuals on top of that every single turn. So I like the 11 count. I think it's plenty <coughs> to try and secure that overall. So here is the full list. I'll try and get it in the description down below as well. Uh, pause now if you want to take a look, but we'll jump into some tech options. And the first few things that may jump out at you is that there are no custom catchers or reset stamps. 
Custom Catch is one of these cards that I've gone back and forth on in Ultra Malamar. Um, at first, I was like, how can you not be playing it when you're a one-hit KO deck? But at the same time, there's just those turns where you're like going for a couple of recharges and then you're just like stellar wishing and you end up like passing um, because you're waiting for like a big um, tag team to be in the active anyway. And so trying to dig out those customs is like, you're sort of just lying in wait and maybe your opponent hits the customs first anyway. So it feels more often than not, you just want to try and get value like straight away and just like attack with a Tina for a few turns instead. So it's more of a mentality difference with how you play the deck when you're not playing custom catchers. If you are playing customs against like tag team decks, you're much more likely to just like drop the Ultra Necrozma immediately. Uh, but now that you don't play customs, you're going to try and do that Giratina game plan early and then just allow the B-string turn to be your big power spike, I guess, is the best way of putting it. But obviously custom catchers still can come in clutch. And if you want to dedicate some spaces to it, um, it's going to be painful for the deck, but it can be done. It may eat into some consistency cards, but that's a risk you have to take because Gusting is still very strong and I can't uh, discredit anyone who wants to try and weave in custom catches because it can just win you games at times. Uh, the reset stamp, I've already mentioned how I prefer Judge, but um, that's just my personal experience with Malamar so far. And reset stamp is far more disruptive in the late game, so I can't discredit that card either. Cherish Rule is pretty interesting. It can obviously get you into your Ultra Necrozma which is one of your main attackers, as well as the Dene for extra outs. Um, I don't think I'd ever play more than like two Cherish Balls, but if you do want to lean more towards that, the Dene out, um, the Cherish Balls could be a pretty cool option. And then, of course, there's like the other toolboxy uh, tag teams and the other options that we have here. Um, Espeon Deoxys being a great cross-division uh, late-game sweep, especially with that Distortion Door shenanigans going on. I think oftentimes it serves a very similar purpose to um sky scorching lights but because we are not paying any gusting um it means that you can be a bit more targeted with the espion and deoxys i guess is the best way of putting it um so that's something that you definitely could consider um gengar and mimikyu poltergeist is never guaranteed but it can do some big knockouts on again some tag team decks um if they are holding large hand sizes full of item cards a dormant necrozma Obviously, Moon's Eclipse can be a great comeback option against Blounds. If you are really expecting a lot of Blounds, you could definitely put this into the deck to make life more difficult for them. Um, also, having that Invasion can help you move your guys a little bit more freely um, in between turns and whatnot. And also, there's the Mimikyu option. Copycat is still pretty reasonable. I think I prefer Mimikyu in the decks that are playing Spell Tags because then the math is much better on things like Charizard specifically, which is one of the big like tech reasons why Mimikyu makes it into some... Malamar decks in the first place, um, but at the same time, Mimikyu is another like one retreat card that has Filch as well, so it's like never a terrible option in the early turns if you have not much else going for you, so I can also see not much harm in adding in a Mimikyu overall, I think it's a pretty reasonable option, um, but once again, I, I think it's like more critical if you're playing Spell Tag and not all that valuable uh, if you're not, because it relies on like lots of Distortion Doors sometimes and whatnot, and that's pretty weak. Onto the matchup overview, and I was actually surprised when I sat down and looked at this, I was like, yeah, Ultra Malamar doesn't actually mind facing many of these decks. It's surprising. I think Whimsicott being like your only bad matchup is like laughable, to be honest. Like if Whimsicott's your worst matchup going to Worlds, you're going to be like rubbing your hands together. So I definitely think that like on paper, there's nothing too scary for Ultra. I think it's actually like able to tackle everything because it can mix and match, right? It can go down a big uh, GX like slog approach. It can go down the non-GX um, trade one-for-one one approach against some of these other tricky non-GX decks. I think even like the more non-GX build of Malamar um, with spell tags is still like even because you can have the Distortion Door um, game plan going on the entire game on your own end. And then you have Sky Scorching Light that can just pull vault you straight back into the lead for game. Especially if they're playing Jirachi, which like basically every Malamar is at the moment because they have to. Um, so I think there's not really like any bad matchup out there for you other than Whimsicott and like you're not going to see like more than two Whimsicott at Worlds I would say I'd be super surprised so uh, although I'm a fan of Whimsicott uh, I don't think it's one of those decks that you'll see too much of so yeah that's a really good matchup spread on paper for Ultra Necrozma and that's kind of where the kicker comes in because there's some things that can go wrong with this deck um, missing your B-string can be a big deal and obviously it's not the same as Clowns, where you can sometimes have Persian, you can sometimes have um, the Drag Nag to help you like draw cards on that crucial turn. And of course, Blounds plays four copies, whereas we're only playing two and hoping to Stellar Wish it out or use an Erica uh, to try and dig those. Um, and at the same time, you know, we're only playing two Ultra Necrozmas, you have to find that on the correct turn. 
A lot of the time it's precise things. You need to find Inke's turn one, Malamar's turn two, B-string on the right turn, Ultra Necrozma on the right turn. All that stuff has to happen sequentially. And in this format, even though this deck does have Jirachi and a decent support account, I think it's not always that easy for you to get things on the right turns. So as good as Ultra is on paper, it's never quite the same when you get into the practicality aspect of this deck. From my experience, uh, maybe that's just my own list, and maybe you guys can prove me wrong of what I need to change in this build. I'll hear it all down below, always. Um, but yeah, I think this is just one of these decks that is just so vastly different in practice than it is on paper, just from my own experience. But I do really like the Beast Ring inclusion. I think it's the only real way that you can realistically keep up with tag teams. Um, if you're able to have two Malamars in play and one Beast Ring, like you're definitely getting through like one tag team straight away. And sometimes that could be enough to, like I say, get you back into good shape. Um, if they are taking early prizes on Inkes or Jirachis or whatnot, you can swing your way back into the game quite happily and then try and close out with, again, another Ultra Necrozma or maybe just a string of Giratinas after that and make life difficult for them. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. I think um, that's something I've not seen in many Ultras, but I think it's something you should definitely be utilizing because it's a pretty big deal in my book. Uh, the only other closing thought I have is the lack of gusting can definitely be felt with this list at times. And again, something like Espeon Deoxys might again just be like worth putting into this list. Um, you don't have the spell tag, so it's not quite as effective, but it's just those times where like Giratina sl swings for like 130 and then like you've distortion doored or whatever. And then like the Espeon Deoxys could close out on a tag team or something like that. But it's one of those like rare situations where you kind of wish you could have some sort of extra sniping. That's actually another tech option I should have mentioned. There's the, um, I think there's an Esper, the one that's used in the Cataday deck. That's another like sniping attacker that you could have in this build as a like tech one of. It's actually like definitely worth considering because there are those moments where you just can't get through the active um, and you've already like pre-set up something on the bench, but you actually can't close the game, which is a little bit awkward. So let me hear your thoughts on my Ultra Necrozma build. Which is your favorite build of Malamar? Will you be playing it at Worlds? Do you expect it to be one of the most popular decks there? Or is it just going to have its usual cult following as always? I wonder how many people are going to jump onto the bandwagon of Malamar because although it doesn't like have the same amount of ball search that it used to have, it still has more than pretty much every other like non-GX deck out there anyway. And it can still have that big one echo potential thanks to Ultra and B-String. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll be back with another deck tomorrow. And yeah. Unified Minds. We're actually getting really close to Worlds now. It's three weeks away and it's getting pretty scary because there's still all these options out here. I'm still exploring all sorts of different builds and I'm still trying to figure out which one's my favorite. So let me know if you've started to narrow down the options. I'll, I'll hear it all in the discussion down below. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Cheers.